Hi, everyone. My name is Caesar Williams, and I am the artistic director of the Fire This Time Festival. And it, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to our fireside chat for season 15. And it is even my bigger, bigger honor to welcome our special guest for today's fireside chat, playwright Taylor Blackman, whose play is Karen B will be featured in this year's 10 Minute Play Festival. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you. Ooh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to say, if I haven't said it before, we are so excited to have your play in the festival. It's Karen B. is it's 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 a powerful play. It's super funny and tragic, kind of at the at the same time. It kind of has this um wonderful alchemy of what we're going through as a people, both historical. In, in, a, in, a, in an historical sense, as well as our future. Um, and yet you do it all with these three uh, characters who are um, over the top and hilarious in their own special way. So just congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it, seriously. Tell us about your play. Yeah, so it's Karen B is a play about a middle-class income family in Chicago. Um, all black family, uh, mother, daughter, and uh, father. Um, and essentially middle-class family doing pretty well for themselves. Dad is a construction worker. Mom is a stay-at-home wife and daughter is on the Gen Z aspect of, of life. Um, yeah. 17, about to turn 18, about to you know start off going to college and beginning her own life. Um, and, and you know, in a perfect world, what more could you ask for? You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's a, <laughs> A strong middle class family with good morals and good values, and I think even with the idea of these parents as a with the Gen Zer, um, these parents are very much forward thinking. They're very in tune with the things that our 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 generation below us go through. Um, they're they're trying to stay current and trying to be, be as I say as black parents, which we don't see much often. They are trying to be as flexible and and come to an understanding about the way that this new generation gen z is living their lives and what they're bringing to the table um they're all in therapy you know what i'm saying it's truly really, truly like such a forward-thinking family and then one day uh their daughter decides that she has a a, a secret to confess and i'll leave it at that for now <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yes we don't want to give it away um right but what would you like the audience to walk away with? Um, or what would you like them to know after seeing your play that they didn't know before? Is there anything in particular? Yeah, I think there's a big sense that within this play, um, the idea that proximity to power will mm. always come back to the color of our skin. Um, it, was, it will always come back to the history that we have lived. Um, and, the, and the proximity to um being saved or or even getting a leg up in like what i think is like we're seeing right now uh the degradation of our earth and our planet i'm wondering i start to wonder and i think we also wonder who will be the first ones to be taken care of or saved x y and z um will it be white people or will it be rich people like what what did, what aspect and what things will require will be required for you to be able to survive. And I think that's a point in question I think about a lot. Because I think a lot of our world right now, we're looking and we're just seeing so many different things go on. Um, we're seeing Palestine right now and, and the whole situation in Gaza. We're seeing um, lawmakers uh, act in a way we've never seen within the uh, confines of our society. So there's just so much going on, I think. And global warming, there's, there's so many things. And I think when you put that on the generation that is younger than, I'm a millennial, but the young generation that is younger than us, the world almost seems so dismal for mm -hmm. like how to navigate. And I think they're gonna find a way to navigate that is very different from how we've maybe navigated these current waters. Exactly, exactly. It's so interesting that you that you talk about how, as our world is kind of going through this drastic change, and you know resources will be needed to help people um and we live in a society where not everybody gets who will get um kind of that metaphorical if the world were blowing up who would be on the rocket ship to mars and what would mm -hmm. be the price or what what's the cost of the ticket 
to get there? Is it skin? Is it money? Um, is it almost uh, your your play kind of brings up an interesting point in terms of is it um, empathy or purity? You know, uh -huh. who can have power and yet not be tarred by the 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 winds of uh, of political correctness or or social uh, judgment and who sits in that in that that precious spot. So I just think your your play is beautiful in that way. And congratulations again. Uh, so what other projects are you working on? Uh, what things are you excited about, uh, passionate about now? Yeah, so right now I'm currently working um, as a playwright. I'm working on a show called To Infinity. It is uh, part of the Roberta P. Sloan uh, Foundation with Ensemble Studio Theater. So that's, I've been commissioned with them for the past year. Working on that, that's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm also working on another play called Riverside Drive. I had a residency with High Arts, uh, their organization in Harlem. Uh, I did that about a year ago, so I've been developing that as well. Um, for myself as, a, as an artist, right now I'm working on a show called The Salvagers up at Yale Repertory Theater. Um, it is a world premiere by Harrison David Rivers, which has been a lot of fun. Um, and we're, we're, we open this Thursday. So getting ready for that to open up and then um, I'm also working on a piece called Hero uh, with Sharifa Ali and Vuyo Satash. Um, Vuyo is a musician and it's a South African piece uh, that is majority South African actors and then myself. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think for me, I'm excited to keep finding work that is not just challenging for me as an artist to either write act or direct, um, but finding work that is complex in the storytelling that isn't simple, that requires lots and lots of research and workshops and time. Um, I think we're in an age in, in, in motion right now where sometimes things feel rushed for the idea of getting on stage. And while I understand like the idea of having opportunity, I also believe in the idea of taking time to make sure that the stuff we're creating is actually gonna have a long lasting effect versus getting it on a stage or on a TV screen for that next, you know, that excitement. I think when you're creating what we call, we call this medicine, right? Um, theater is medicine for the soul or arts are medicine for the soul. It takes time. What, what were you like as a child? Bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say bad in the way of like, <laughs> I say bad because like, I was like, I was just so, so I wouldn't say bad. I was rambunctious. Like I had a lot of energy. Mischievous. Um, mischievous. Mischievous. A <laughs> little bit like of a like a smart aleck, a little bit like a jokester. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of like very athletic. I love to like run and play sports. Um, at the same time, I didn't discover the arts really until yeah, I think I did like I joined the, the choir at church. I did that for years, but like I wasn't really in the arts until I went to college. Okay. I went to college. Uh, oh, not college, high school, sorry. Um, but yeah, I, I was trying to just have a good time and have fun. And I was mischievous, but also like very intuitive and very independent, mm. very much understanding like, and that's what I think most city kids are independent to a certain extent. And I was taking the bus to school by myself, like the actual city bus. At like five, wow. you know, you put your little change and you go sit down and you, you know, take the bus from like 20 minutes from, you know, your house to the school. And, you know, no, back then it was, you know, that was normal. Um, but just that sense of independence. And as I got older, wanting to be even more independent. Um, like, I think, <laughs> my, I think my dad knows this. Like, I was 16. I think I was working a full-time job. Oh, not full-time job. I was working a part-time job at a restaurant. And I wanted to go to New York and go see some shows. And I was like... Yeah, my my friend from work like wants to go to New York with me. And my dad, like, he he's so chill. He's like, okay, well, if you just give me her number and make sure you just tell me where you're staying, you can go. I went by myself to New York. Oh my. Yeah. Yes. I like I was that kind of like independent. Like I granted, I'm so glad if I I, I don't think I could do that now. If I was 16, I think <laughs> the world is very different. Yeah. But like, you know was always trying to just find a way to like get what I wanted. I wanted mm. to understand the art that was in New York. I wanted to 
be in it. I wanted to, to really just go for things. And I think that kind of just going for things is a lot of how I found a lot of the, I think the grounding and, and, and success that I found so far has come from just going for things and not being afraid. It's, I Playwriting literally just fell on my lap when I started uh, writing during the pandemic. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, a, I'm an actor, who knows? And I just started writing um, and just went for it. And I think it's the biggest gift I've ever I've given myself to just, like go for things. Yeah. I think when you make your own things, I, I can only speak for myself. I have felt more grounded and more it, like earnest about my nose, about mm -hmm. my balance piece. Um, knowing that like every opportunity is not going to be for me. Um, I've been able to advocate for myself a lot more when I am in spaces where I am an actor. Um, and I think it comes from a place of like not, I think sometimes when you're in this space of acting and like, again, bills are due, life is happening. There can be sort of a um, appeasing or, or conforming to what's going to get you that next job or that next thing. And, I'm so glad that I started writing because it gave me yeah. such a, a breath. Like, I don't need to do any of that at this point in my life. I, yeah, there are other ways. I don't, that way for me doesn't work. And I, I could feel it wasn't working. And I started writing. I was like, oh, this is what feels more, more full. Um, we, we had the fire this time. We're so glad that you did. <laughs> I'm glad too. I'm glad too. I'm excited. What is something great about you that very few people know? What is something great about me that very few people know? Great about me, wow. Um, I mean, it's gonna sound very woo-woo. I mean, I, that's great about me. It's gonna sound very woo-woo, Erica Badu. But like, <laughs> um, I am very big about self-reflection and self-growth. Like that is a big part of my like journey now, as of now in my life, just like, trying to always look at the ways I behave as an individual and and, and why that is and, and really like investigate those things and, and go to therapy and do those things. Yes. Um, just because I feel like it's easy to go 30 years and be like, wait, 30 years past me, what did I, did I, I'm, and I'm still in the same space as I am or X, Y, and Z. I, I don't think, in this life that we're in, I don't think we're meant to be in the same place, having the same patterns. I don't want to be 60 and be like, well, that's just the way I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be like, that was the way I am. And yet there's still moments for growth. If you were not doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? I'd probably be working with kids, like in the aspect of either teaching or like running a summer camp. Mm -hmm. Um like I'll be running like a summer, like an executive director's summer camp. Kids are freaking dope. <laughs> and they're just, they're, they are the coolest humans when you actually treat them like they're human and not kids. Like they, they, they are so poignant. They like taking, they have a lot more information in their minds than we think they do. And they have a lot of answers to a lot of different things. And that's why I think like, it's so interesting. I mean, I believe in God, but I do think there's something to be said about like, the beginning of like the closest you are to like birth, the more you know about the world and like towards the end of your life, the more you know about the world. I think those two two sides of the world or of, of existence are, you you know a lot. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's just for like, you know, just cause I think there's something to be said about that because kids really do have such a poignant view about the world that is unhind uh, that's unhindered by societal standards or thoughts of, you know, depleting them of like their of their natural being they're they're truly pure in their existence of who they are so i would be working with kids yeah yeah good 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 uh is there anything else that you'd like to share about yourself the play other projects anything i think we are in a time where it is so important for artists to really curate important work about the world around us Mm -hmm. And to really take the time to tell the stories that are not out there. Um, I think we are in a time where, you know, we're seeing like, you know, Barbie the musical on Broadway. And it's like, cool, great. But mm -hmm. I think there's also something to be said about like, while that is 
what we're seeing a lot of right now, I think is also like we need we need some truth. So if you are not writing, please write. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't write, choreograph. If you don't choreograph, like I don't know, go do some research papers. Like truly, we need people to generate good art and 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 thought provoking work. I am I'm hungry for it. I know that a few of my colleagues are hungry for it. Like. I am yearning for really good stories and really good work and really good art that is going to make me think and going to make me ponder my own existence and the existence of the world around us. Like, and I'm, I'm begging, please, 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 please create, please. Like it is, I think, I think it is detrimental at this point that we create. If we don't see it, we have to create it. We have to, we actually have to. I think it is like not a, even a negotiation right now. We have to create it. Yeah. Because I don't think anybody will unless we do. So. Oh, what a perfect ending. <laughs> Taylor A. Blackman, thank you so much for joining us on the Fireside Chat. I want to take a brief moment to thank our audience for tuning in. Uh, please come check out Taylor's play along with five other, five other 10 minute plays at uh, season 15 of the Fire This Time Festival which will be running January 18th through the 28th at the Wild Project on the Lower East Side. And um, we just look forward to seeing you all. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you.